The iPhone 16 Pro has a hidden weapon. Apple talked about their new chip, the A18 Pro, but honestly, I think they undersold how significant this chip could be. And combined with an upgraded cooling solution, the iPhone 16 Pro could turn out to be a total sleeper. So much so that the iPhone might be just as powerful as an M1 MacBook Air. So today let's do a deep dive into what we know and don't know about the A18 Pro, right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Paperlike's Screen Protector 2.1. Now available on 2024 iPads, Paperlike helps you write and draw on your iPad like a real sheet of paper. Thanks to their microbead technology called NanoDots, you get a realistic paper-like experience without obscuring any of your content. Compared to Apple's nano texture display, Paperlike is designed to give you the haptic feeling of writing on paper, not just cut down on glare. In fact, Paperlike is so confident you'll love your screen protector that they offer a 100-day satisfaction guarantee. So to learn more and buy Screen Protector 2.1, check out the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. So let's get right into it. The day after Apple's September event, we got our first leaked Geekbench score for the A18 chip in the regular iPhone 16. And honestly, it was very underwhelming. We see a single core score of 3114 and a multi-core of just 6666. Oh man, it's the devil's chip. Now, to be honest, this score didn't really make sense. Take a look at the iPhone 15 Pro Max with an A17 Pro. It's doing much better in the multi-core, but the single core score is actually lower than that of the A18. So I don't really think that result is gonna turn out to be accurate, but also it's for the regular A18. What we are talking about is the A18 Pro, and fortunately, just yesterday, we got our first Geekbench result for that, and it is, uh, wow. Yeah, we're seeing a single core score of 3409, multi-core of nearly 8500. Now to put that in perspective, the M1 chip in this same benchmark scores 8700. So we are just 3% behind the performance of the M1 chip in an iPhone. That's crazy. And look at the single core score too. The A18 Pro has a 40% higher single core score than the M1 chip a chip which was famous for having really, really good single and multi-threaded performance. So the A18 Pro looks pretty nuts. Apple claimed that the A18 Pro can provide up to 15% faster performance or the same performance while consuming 20% less power than the A17 Pro. Now, I do wanna stress the wording there because Apple is not saying that it's 15% faster and 20% more efficient. They're saying it's either up to 15% faster or 20% more efficient at the same performance level. And it's capable of delivering the same performance using 20% less power compared to A17 Pro. But honestly, I think the GPU gains are even more substantial because Apple is claiming 20% faster GPU with two times faster ray tracing versus the A17 Pro. And that's even more impressive when you realize that the A17 Pro also boasted 20% improved peak performance over the previous generation. So that's a cumulative 40% gain in GPU in just two generations. Wow. But here's the thing, the iPhone has never been wanting for performance. For the last 10 years, all iPhones have been ludicrously fast. In fact, I bet that a bunch of you watching this video right now have an iPhone XS or an 11 or a 12 Pro or something like that, and I guarantee that you're not worried about your phone feeling slow. You're mainly worried about the battery life and the fact that it overheats all the time. Well, fortunately, iPhone 16 Pro aims to tackle both of those issues. Number one, we have that increased efficiency. To me, it doesn't really matter that the A18 Pro can give me 15% more CPU and 20% more GPU performance. I care more about the 20% less power consumption at the same performance, because that means that in doing basic menial tasks that don't stress your CPU, you're gonna be consuming less power and producing less heat. And that's where iPhone 16 Pro's design comes into play. 
The basic design for the iPhone 16 Pro is the same as last year. It's a titanium frame, which is bonded through solid state diffusion to an aluminum substructure. However, for this year's iPhone, they highlighted a new graphite coating on that substructure. It's combined with a graphite clad aluminum substructure, creating an innovative architecture that enables up to 20% improvement in sustained performance. This is, <laughs> this is what's so confusing about an Apple event, right? We have 15% higher performance on the CPU, but then 20% higher sustained performance because of a new cooling system in the chassis. So does that mean, can you just add those? Is it 35%? But then what about the power efficiency? How does that factor in? There's too many percentages to actually be able to wrap your brain around what this could mean. But if we put all of these pieces together, right, you've got this new graphite coating on the aluminum substructure. So at normal operating situations, we can expect better heat dissipation and less power consumption from the chip itself. So overall, that should equate to a phone that uses less battery and produces less heat. And when you add to that Apple's upgraded battery technology, which they were super duper specific about, by the way. Battery optimizations, larger batteries, advanced power management, and the remarkable efficiency of Apple Silicon provide fantastic battery life. That's how you get to that increased battery life figure that Apple is quoting for the iPhone 16 Pro. But what I find really telling about all of this is there's so many weird disconnected parts of this keynote working together to create that picture. On the one hand, you've got the battery team. They're working on increasing capacity, creating better thermal management. Then on the other hand, you've got the iPhone design team. They're working on the chassis with that new graphite cladding. And then on the other, other hand, you've got the Apple Silicon team working on making the chip more powerful and more efficient. And the kind of weird and disconnected way that they lay this out in the keynote is very telling on how Apple operates as a company because everyone that I've ever spoken to that has worked for Apple has said that basically the teams are in their own separate silos without much communication. So I would be willing to bet that the battery team had no idea what the Apple Silicon team was doing and the Apple Silicon team probably had no idea or very little idea what the iPhone chassis and design team was working on. And that's why you have all of these disconnected presenters and different statistics, which all add up to an iPhone that is as powerful as a MacBook, which seems like it's probably gonna have the best battery life we've seen in years, while also improving on the thermal management issue that Apple's been dealing with for a little while now. So you put these things all together, it's very confusing to do, but it paints a pretty good picture and one that I'm excited to explore further when I get my hands on these devices. And Apple also has a knack for putting a bunch of other goodies in their chips. I mean, CPU and GPU performance are all well and good, but things like Apple's new video encoder and new ISP that offer two times the data bandwidth and efficiency for video, that's gonna be great for video producers. And it's probably part of why Apple's able to offer 4K 120 FPS Dolby Vision video recording on this phone. There's also the new display engine, which operates ProMotion, the always-on display, a faster USB controller compared to last year, and enables ProRes video recording. That's just another new thing that they chucked in there. Who knows what impact that would have on efficiency or battery life or memory usage. It's, it's a lot to take in, and really you could go to any point in an Apple keynote and hyperanalyze what they're saying and what that actually means behind the scenes. Obviously, these keynotes are a polished version of the updates that they've been making for the past year, but really we need to just get our hands on the actual devices and, and see what this all means in real life. And I'm personally quite excited for that. And if you are too, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on this video. And of course, check back for a ton of coverage on all of this stuff in just about one week. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.